Welcome to this Kenan Coffee Break webinar, Nutrition for Brain Health, New Research on Lutein and Zeaxanthin. My name is Cece Snyder. I'm a Global Product Manager at Kenan Human Nutrition and Health, and our main presenter today is Dr. Lisa Renzi Hammond, and she's going to share some new research on lutein and zeaxanthin. So let's get started. With the world situation as it is, there's a lot of attention right now on maintaining wellness through nutrition. So for today's Chem and Coffee Break, we're offering some positive news on two nutrients for brain health with some very interesting findings from Lisa Renzi Hammond of the University of Georgia, looking first at a study in young adults, and secondly, a recent publication on the effects of lutein and zeaxanthin on brain tissue, both studies using fluorogal lutein and optosharp zeaxanthin. For lutein and zeaxanthin, these key nutrients are found in green leafy vegetables, in eggs and corn, among other sources and they're found together in food. For Kemen, our two brands, Florigal Lutein and Zia1 Zeaxanthin, which is sold as OptiSharp Natural Zeaxanthin by our partner and distributor, DSM, we source lutein and zeaxanthin from marigold flowers. And it's important to note that not all lutein is the same. Florigal Lutein is lutein in the same forms as these common foods here. And that's not the case for all lutein's on the market. Okay, lutein and zeaxanthin, they're found in the eye. They're found in the back of the eye in the retina, in the center of the retina, known as the macula, in the lens and in other eye tissue. They're found in the skin, in the breast tissue and breast milk. And for today's webinar, we're going to focus in on that these key nutrients are found in the brain. As I mentioned, green leafy vegetables are a great source of lutein and zeaxanthin. And to get to the level that's recommended each day, we need about four cups of raw spinach, for example. The challenge, as you might guess, is that we don't always get enough from our diet. So like other nutrients that are challenging to consume from diet alone, supplements can fill a gap. Before I turn it over to Dr. Renzi Hammond, it's important to note that not all supplements are the same. Florical lutein is in fact the only lutein brand that is grass or generally recognized as safe for infant formula in the U.S. It's the most studied lutein brand by far over, over 90 human publications. It's the brand that's trusted by doctors. It's a lutein brand with excellent stability on shelf compared to other lutein's. It's proven in bioavailability, meaning that it is absorbed and makes it to the blood in the eyes. And finally, um, here at Kemen, we're known as the author of the blue light patent showing how lutein protects vulnerable eyes. So specific on brain health for this webinar, Floraglow Lutein has nine publications that support its use in brain health, more publications than any lutein source. Dr. Renzi Hammond will cover findings first from a study with Floraglow and OptiSharp on young adults, followed by the most recent paper looking at brain tissue differences in those with increased macular pigment optical density. Now, macular pigment optical density is a measure of lutein and zeaxanthin status in the eye, and it's correlated to levels in the brain, so highly relevant for this webinar. So, Dr. Renzi Hammond, I'm going to turn it over to you. Cece, thanks so much for the introduction. It is a real pleasure to be able to present um, some of our work on this topic today. So I, I want to take a minute to just to just restate a few things that that we heard you say. So we heard you indicate um, what lutein is, where we can find it, um, how much we we strive to eat in our day, and and you've alluded to the fact that we can actually get lutein. Um, through dietary supplements, which I think as people are making healthier diet choices, um, moving toward long-term dietary change are a really, really great thing um, that we can do. So one of the big questions that I think everyone probably has at this point is, you know, we know where lutein is actually located in the body, but does it matter, right? Does it do anything that should motivate us to change our diets and to supplement and to do these things like that? And the answer from our work is yes, absolutely. So we always have an adage in biology, right? Which is structure dictates function. When we consume things like lutein in our diets, knowing that we don't actually synthesize them ourselves in our bodies, that we have to eat them if we want to get them into our tissues, when lutein does things like load itself into the retina and load itself into the brain, um, it changes the physical structure of the brain. And if you change structure, you should also be able to change function. Now there's an entire lifespan story that we could really tell about lutein, beginning in moms to be, continuing into infancy, 
going forward into childhood and moving up into adulthood. But I think when most of us think of cognitive function, we think of two age categories, right? How do we improve things in kids? And how do we improve things in older adults who may be at risk for neurodegenerative disease, like say Alzheimer's disease? So in our work, um, we actually tried to answer this question by doing a randomized controlled trial. So this was a double masked placebo controlled trial. We didn't know what our participants were taking. They didn't know what they were taking. Um, and we tested two groups. We tested older adults who were at risk for cognitive impairment, and we tested younger adults. These were college students at the University of Georgia. And that's actually a, a, an oddly meaningful thing to say, because in the state of Georgia, if students maintain a certain grade point average, they can actually come to college for free, which means that the bulk of the students at the University of Georgia are not actually paying for their education. It's free. Um, they're extraordinarily high performing students. They really, really do well in school. Um, and we kind of thought when we started the study that those students would really be a control for us, that changing their diets wouldn't really significantly increase their cognitive performance. And we were so surprised when we saw the results. Um, perhaps we shouldn't have been if we go back to that adage, structure dictates function. If we put lutein into the brain, right, if we're restoring this molecule that should have been in there all along, right, then we should see changes in function. And that's exactly what we see. So one of the first places where we saw improvement was in visual memory. When you think about our tasks every day, right, we go out, we navigate our worlds and, you know, we see light, we see movement. We see landmarks that help us, you know, associate, oh, that tree means I turn down this street, right? So we pair these things together in our brains. We make these sort of visual associations. So younger adults who actually took the supplement had a significant improvement compared to the same younger adults, right? The same class of students, um, the same high performing academically achieving students who got the placebo. So we saw these improvements in visual memory that are consistent specifically with lutein and above and beyond the group um, who received the placebo. Same thing with reasoning ability. So, you know, you would think that undergraduate college students are really at peak for their ability to reason, to problem solve, um, to make good judgments, to do things like that. And what we found was that those students who took the lutein supplement whose macular pigment, that lutein in, in retina, that's such a good biomarker for us of how much lutein is actually in the rest of the central nervous system, in brain, right? What we saw was that those students who had that improvement in their macular pigment, in their retinal lutein and zeaxanthin, really increased in terms of reasoning ability as well. So they got better at solving problems. And finally, we saw these improvements in things like complex attention. I think all of us are getting used to a world where having to pay attention from afar, <laughs> as you are doing right now while watching this, right, is becoming a big deal for us. The ability to attend to things in your world, um, to really focus on them and exclude the things that don't matter, that aren't important to you. Um, those college students who had that increase in their lutein and zeaxanthin went down in attentional errors, right? So we see these big improvements across the board in college students who we really didn't expect to change. Now, of course, this was the group we were really excited about seeing our changes in. These are older adults. The average age um, of folks in this study was about 77 years. Um, so these are older people who are supplementing lutein and zeaxanthin for the first time. So this was 10 milligrams of, of lutein and two milligrams of zeaxanthin for the same year that our undergraduates did it um, in the exact same manner. And what we saw again were these changes in complex attentional ability, in executive function, and in cognitive flexibility. And I really wanna pause for a minute and spotlight those things, executive function and, com and cognitive flexibility. Executive function is your ability to take all of the pieces of information that you're taking in through your senses, right? And make good decisions about what to do. It's your ability to plan your day, right? To really think about what the consequences of your behaviors might be if you execute them. Your ability to wake up and say, okay, today I need to accomplish the following things, um, but I've got these potential barriers. Here's how I'm going to solve my problem, right? So executive function is the ability to do that in a way that you would, you know, that you really want to. Now, cognitive flexibility is a biggie for us because one thing that happens to us over time is that we get very rule-driven in our behavior, right? 
We like to eat the same foods. We like to shop at the same stores. We like to do all the same things in our day. So cognitive flexibility is the ability to change the way you solve a problem when the rules of the problem themselves change. It's one of those things that we know tends to decrease with age. So this ability to pick it back up as a result of supplementing lutein was a really incredible find. Okay, let's go back to that adage, structure dictates function. So what structurally is happening in brain that's causing these cognitive functions to change? Well, the answer is when we measure macular pigment, that lutein and zeaxanthin that's actually embedded in retina, which we can think of as a little tiny piece of brain, um, or even when we look in your blood. And, and the interesting thing about that is that usually relationships between the amount of something in a tissue and the amount of something in blood, they're related, but they're not perfect. Blood's usually a, you know, a, a less profound, less important biomarker for us than measuring the nervous system itself. And yet we still see it. So if we're asking that question, what on earth is the mechanism? How is this all working? Um, what we found in our studies was that lutein in the brain really changes the integrity of white matter. So if it's the case, right, that, that I am learning something new, let's say that as I'm sitting here talking to you, in the back of my head, I'm rehearsing something that's brand new, a new fact that I need to learn, um, something like that. What's essentially happening is that I am trying to strengthen connections between cells that are responsible for storing information, right? So if it's the case that I ask you to do something like, you know, repeat a number over and over again, like maybe the number 14. If I ask you to say the number 14 out loud 14 times, um, and then I ask you to think of a, of a vegetable, those of you who have any experience with the, with the terminology of 14 carat gold are more likely to think of the vegetable carrot when I make you say the word 14 right? You've made an association between two unrelated things. If you think about the way that a brain is built, right? We always think of brains in terms of gray matter, the cell bodies that really sort of constitute the guts of a cell, and white matter, the connections between cells. When we start worrying about things like cognitive decline, we're worried about gray matter, but first we're worried about white matter. We're worried about all of those wonderful connections that are formed between cells thinning out and dying away. What we see when we supplement lutein is changes in white matter integrity. All those connections between neurons become a little bit stronger when we introduce lutein back into the brain. And I keep saying back into the brain because in a really perfect world with lots of time to cook and really healthy diets that are loaded up with vegetables, it would have been there already, right? If we eat good, healthy foods, we should already be loading that molecule into our brains. But for a lot of folks, supplementation is a really great way to get started down that pathway. And for those who are at risk, it might add a little bit of extra protection. And one of the ways we think it's doing that is by boosting white matter integrity. Now, the other thing that it's doing is really improving efficiency. Right, when we supplement xanthophils, lutein, zeaxanthin, things like this, what we see are changes in the effort, right? Changes in, in the way that our networks actually communicate with each other. When you think about it, you know, what I should be doing if I'm, if I'm sitting outside, maybe watching my dog or my goats, um, I should be sort of drifting away, thinking about the past, thinking about the future, right? I should be in default mode. But if you need me to do something, if I have to shift my attention and solve a problem, what I wanna be able to do is very efficiently and effectively get out of default mode and start entering problem solving mode. I'm the parent of a toddler, so I get very little time in default mode these days and lots of time in, pro in problem solving mode, right? So the ability to make those shifts very efficiently, effectively, and quickly. Individuals with more lutein in their brains seem to be able to make those network shifts much faster and much, you know, with much less effort than those who do not have that lutein loaded into the nervous system. So this is a, a, a super quick and dirty summary of some of the things that lutein is doing in brain, but not all. It's my deep and sincere hope that those of you who are interested in this topic really reach out and start digging into the literature here because there's a lot going on with this molecule in the nervous system. 
Thanks a lot for your time. Great. Thank you, Dr. Renzi Hammond, and thanks to everyone for listening today and for joining this Kemen Coffee Break. For more information, feel free to visit us at kemen.com forward slash health. And please send any questions directly to me. My email is on the screen here. It's cc.snyder at kemen.com. Thank you for joining us.